Hey family, how are you doing? This is your brother Brian Mayer. Peace, peace to you, peace to your home, peace to your family, peace to your community, peace to your uh, peace to your ancestry, peace to my community, peace to my ancestry, and peace to the nation that you, I, and they are building. Peace also to the Gallic forces, great spirit above, mother below. This is MT Marathi, everybody. MT Marathi, soul lightning. So, um, the video that I produced on uh, debate prep called um, How I Respond to All Lives Matter. Uh, I didn't get a lot of responses to it, which is, you know, whatever. <laughs> that doesn't happen. But um, <clears throat> the one response that I did get kind of made me think that I'd want to do a part two. Um, this brother left a comment and it touched my heart. I'm not even joking. He said, great video. I've always felt I haven't been able to articulate my answers well enough in an argument. This video has made me want to brush up on my skills. Inspiring video. And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand family. At the end of the day, it's not just about teaching you. The word inspire is important, and that's what I'm hoping to do for you. I want to get you going. I want you to realize that the power is really within you. When you see a Martin Luther King, when you see a Malcolm X, when you see a Denmark VC, when you see a Harriet Tubman, when you see a Maya Angelou, when you see the greatest people in our history, that's in you. That's in you. We can do that. With that, we are in we are in a time period where resurrection is happening. Most of us just don't realize it. But we are able to bring about greatness on every level. So I wanted to do a follow-up video to that. I wanted to do a follow-up video to that where I talk to you a little bit about um uh kind of the the prep work for arguing because believe it or not uh and and <laughs> I love telling the story of how I used to be because I'm so different than how I used to be um sorry I need some water and I got some water right here so I want to pour some uh how I used to be uh, growing up, I was very shy. Um, I was not only shy, but I stuttered. Um, I couldn't put together sentences very well. Um, I couldn't public speak to save my life. Uh, in fourth grade, third or fourth grade, <clears throat> I think it was fourth grade, we did a play. And um, I was the backup Santa. Well, it was a Christmas play. I ended up being the backup Santa. I don't know how that happened, but my class, I was one of two black people in my class. It was me and um, another girl um, named Takara. Beautiful, beautiful Jamaican girl. Um, the, like the, the most popular kid in the class was Santa obviously. And I got voted to be the backup Santa, which was insane. Like, what? Well, he ended up getting sick the week of the play, and I had to play Santa. I was terrified. Couldn't do it. Now, and but I did do it. I mean, it, it was like I did my lines. I had like two lines really. I did them so quickly and just hit away afterwards. I mean, I was terrified of being on stage. Fast forward to 2010, and I had the opportunity to speak at um, a statewide convention for something that I was a part of at the time. And there was like 7,500 to 10,000 people there, and I was the MC. And a couple of other people, it was me and three other people. Two of those people were, were terrified. I was all in. 
I was game. I was fine. I've changed a lot, in other words, ladies and gentlemen. I've changed a lot. Um, even in, in my early 20s, I wasn't a good debater. I wasn't a good person um, to have arguments with because I just couldn't find the information. So what changed was I, one, got sick of getting my butt kicked in arguments. No joke. I just, I got tired of it. So I was playing football and I realized, you know, I did, I didn't practice all the time for football because it was mostly pickup games, but I did practice enough. You know, I, I, I played quarterback, um, receiver and cornerback. I practiced enough with receiving and cornerback to be good at it. And with quarterback, I practiced enough to be decent at that. So I started approaching debating even even when it was just um, outside of a, uh, a, a formal structure. I approached debating the same way I approached football. I'm going to learn about it. I'm going to learn how to think like a debater. And then I'm going to learn how to um, speak in debate form. And even though, yes, most people don't argue in debate form, what it does, it keeps your mind on track and focused. I literally, it took me about a good three or four years to do this, but I would, I was, I would sit down and, um, I would imagine that I was having a conversation with somebody about something that I care deeply about. Let's say racism. And by the way, if you get Neely Fuller's book on racism, I may not agree with everything in that book. And there's a lot that I do not agree with. But one of the great things that he did was he put it in question answer form. He gave you information and then he gave you questions and answers after the information. Now, the questions and answers weren't to see if you understood the information. The questions and answers were kind of a dialogue of, you know, somebody somebody who wasn't an anti-racist, who was a racist, asking you a question, and how would you respond to it? Or how might you respond to it? And then it's the mind's job to say, okay, why would I respond to that like that? So I kind of did that. I learned how to think ahead of, of, of paying attention to one, how people ask questions, how people frame their questions, why people frame their questions that way, why people ask questions that, or ask the questions that they ask, and then learning how to break down a question. That was huge. When you look at, um, and I would say this, if you could, um, and, and, and you really want to be good at arguing, start a, start a debate club with other black people and then move through the process of developing an analytical process for, um, questions. If you look at questions, say on a news channel, you think they're just questions. No, some of those, some of the part, some of the, if you look at the question itself, there are there are keywords that are meant to trigger you and make you kind of get off of your message or try or or better yet they're meant to make you respond emotionally and then there's other words which are which are actually filler words where, you know, they have to be in there because it helps the question be formed, but they're just filler. And then there are other questions, then there are other words within the question that aren't trigger words. They are actually the substance. They're the, they're what you actually want to be talking about. I saw a really good example of this, um, with this, uh, new New York. This guy just won this primary. In New York City, he was taking on a man who had been in Congress for like 30 years, 
Um, his last name is Booker, the guy who won. The guy who he was going up against was Angles. And so he 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 trounced the guy. It was a um primary. He trounced the guy. He was like at present he is up like twenty something points. And yet CNN won't call the election. So um one of their top reporters had this man on for an interview. And she was asking him some pretty loaded questions, meaning she was asking him questions to try to trigger him. That's what, when people say loaded questions, that's what they're talking about. They're questions meant to hit you emotionally, to get you to stop thinking with your mind. That's what they're there for. It's to stop you from thinking rationally and to get you to start acting emotionally because once they get you to start acting emotionally the goal for them is not to win that's their goal their goal is to get you to to overreact so then they can say you know you're not rational so i can't deal with you whatever you want isn't rational it's not even you know it's not clear enough where you can just talk about it with your mind you're the problem i'm not when it was the question that they asked or how they asked the question which was the problem he though and i give him credit for this because i couldn't have done it she asked him several loaded questions that was meant to just trigger him she even brought james clyburn into it to try to get him um to respond negatively about another black person and he went through the went went through the filler didn't even worry about the filler didn't worry about um those trigger words let that all go he went straight to the heart the stuff that's actually the substance and he answered a question or each question based on that substance now when you learn how to break down a question then you can start to see the motives of the people who are actually asking them moreover if you can make a if you can make a profile that is based on legitimate observations prior to the debate if you can make up um a profile based on observations that you have made about the person who is going to be asking you the questions based on observations based on facts you can pretty much start to predict what is the what are the trigger words or I don't want to say predict what the trigger words are because you, you never can really predict that. But if you understand who you're debating and you're and you can understand what they're trying to accomplish in the questions that they're going to be asking you. So what's the big picture? When you understand that. They can throw as many trigger words at you as they want, because at the end of the day. You're going to be keying in to the substance and not the trigger words. The trigger words are just there for you because you know what they're trying to accomplish. But here's the other side of that. What are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to accomplish? That's the other side of this. You need, as much as you need a profile of what the other person is trying to accomplish, what they're trying to do, you also need a profile for what you are trying to do. What is your actual goal? So if you're just going to argue with somebody about racism, okay, that's fine. You're going to argue, and guess what's going to happen? You're just going to keep arguing and arguing and arguing and arguing because you don't have a goal. Now, if you're there trying to convince them that racism exists, Good luck with that one. That's a very broad goal. I'm not saying don't do it, but if you're going to try to um, influence somebody that deeply, which means you have to convince them that a system that that dis, uh, is, is destructive to you, but maybe, let's say you're debating a white person, but it is beneficial to them, exists, it's a tough hill to climb. It's a tough hill to climb. Unless you have a philosophy already 
that enables you to to form a profile with what you are actually trying to accomplish. So what I mean by that is Francis Francis Cress Welsing, she had a philosophy that she carried with her her entire life. And based on that philosophy, she had set principles and goals in mind for every time she talked to black people, what did she want to convince them? Every time she talked to white people, what did she want to convince them of? Every time she talked to, you know, brown or red people, what did she want to convince them of? That is what I'm talking about. And most of us were not there yet. Heck, I'm not I'm not totally there. I know some stuff that I uh, like to try to convince white people of, but just talking about racism, just trying to convince people that racism exists, it's it's a tough sled to climb. But what you could do, <clears throat> um, is one. I would read and look up. You can actually look this up online. Um, what Francis Cress Welsing's uh definition of racism was and i would adopt that it's a very long definition um i i think it is the correct definition to use i do believe because of the complexities of this language that um there needs to be more than one definition compared considering how europeans usually define or design their definitions but her definition is golden and i think I'm hoping um, Webster's Dictionary, oh, Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, recently said that they were going to change the definition of racism. And they said that there was a woman who had contacted them and said that they needed to change the definition of racism to make it less confusing to white people. They didn't say who called them. But the terminology which they used about the less confusing to white people suggests that it was either Dr. Uh, Welsing or it was one of her students, because uh, that is something that that she's been trying to get the dictionary to do and to dedicate itself to doing since the 1980s. So something to keep in mind. Um, but having that definition in the back of your head gives you gives you a framework to work from um moreover understanding what you believe will give you the correct principles necessary to form um uh, uh to form the necessary profile that you will need to argue directly with a person once you have those things in place, when you understand the other person or and, and actually let me take the other person out of it, because it's not really the other person. It it really does start with you. And this is something that I I appreciated after I went through the process. Again, two or three years worth of getting my mind around, you know, uh, 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 articulating arguments well enough. Um, but it is something that I learned how to appreciate, you know. So once you get a profile, really, of what you want to convince people of and project, um, once once you you get that philosophy taken care of, you actually understand um, what it is that you're trying to say away from that profile. I'm not talking about convincing people now because you're not going to talk to them about everything that you believe. But um, a lot of what you believe is going to go into forming the principles, obviously, of what you're trying to convince them of. Once you got those two things, and then once when you really um, understand how you argue, man, more than half the battle is won. It really does start with you. And then, you know, when you start getting good enough where you can, um, predict people's questions it helps you out see 
most of us, we aren't observant, especially black men. And what I mean by we aren't observant is we don't value what we see on a day-to-day -day basis. So we have conversations with people and we just look at them as conversations. No, you realize how many, and I mean this when I say this, you know how many times white people, particularly white people that you see on a daily basis, who are friends, um, who are co-workers, do you know how many times they have conversations with you to test you? And you think you're talking about nothing at all, but they're testing you to make sure that you're still a Negro, to make sure that you're not one of them troublemakers out there. Do you know how many times they do that? And I'm not just talking about one person here. I'm talking about as a collective. I've learned this over the last 10 years. I ignored it for most of my life, but I see the patterns now. They, they treat you like you are an outsider and you don't know it. <laughs> you don't know it. You have no clue about it. They treat you like it, like you're an outsider and they study you. And they learn where they can push you. Now, if I have to add the caveat that everyone always has to add, then, you know, you're really in trouble. But, it, you know, it, you have to start treating these conversations like they mean something. And start paying attention to them. Because then, once you start paying attention to them, and I'm telling you, get a journal. Whether you're using, learn how to do a journal either on your computer or written form. One of the two. Do it. You will start to see patterns. You will start to understand things that you did not understand before. Like, why is Jimmy always asking me about these three different things that I never realized that he was always asking me about. Hmm. Well, maybe I should probe Jimmy to see where his mind is about some stuff without actually letting him know that that is what I'm probing his mind about, because that's what they do to you. All right. I'm going to leave this here. Questions, comments, concerns, leave them below, guys. Maybe I'll do another one about um about debating because um it is very important. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.